Hi, and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we're going to be doing hypothesis testing. And this is going to be problem 12 from the Math 150.5 uh, final review exam. All right. In this problem we have, we have here it says an insurance agent says that the mean cost of insuring a two-year-old sedan in good condition is less than $1,200. A random sample of seven similar insurance quotes has a mean cost of $1,125 and a standard deviation of $55. Is there enough evidence to support the agent's claim at a significance level of 10%? Assume the population is normally distributed. Now this is really important to read because we know the population is normally distributed. This really helps us uh, continue with this problem. So we can do a ZRT based on this. And here we see the claim is what we're looking for. So we look at this first sentence and we see an insurance agent says that the mean cost of insuring a two-year-old sedan is less than $1,200. Now here the word says is indicating that this is the claim, all right? Most of the time claims say the word claim. In this case, we have to look for the, what they're saying about a certain thing. And here it says, the mean cost, right? So we're talking about an average. So here we have the claim stating that the mean is less than $12,000. The words less than mean the less than symbol like this. And we have $1,200. Now, accompanying this problem, I have my table which helps us define which type of test no hypothesis, alternative hypothesis. The no hypothesis have a, has a subscript of zero. The alternative hypothesis has a subscript of the letter A. So here we're going to put our H zero and our H A side by side. And what this table basically does is it takes our claim and it helps us define whether or not it's an alternative or a no hypothesis. So using this table, we look at the symbol that we have with the mean being less than $1,200. And here we see the less than symbol is used for an alternative hypothesis. So by default, this makes our alternative hypothesis our claim. All right? And the counter argument to this would be the, the no hypothesis column, and they go side by side. So if this is less than, our no hypothesis is going to say the mean is greater or equal to $1,200. Now, this covers the first, the second, and the third step. To complete the fourth step, we have to determine what type of tail of test this is. And based on this, we see right next to the two symbols we use, we have this is the test type is going to be a left tail test. So here we know this is a left tail. Now, to define the critical region, we also have to find our significance level, which we see here is 0.10. And because it's 0 0.10 and it's a left tail test, we'll draw a diagram. And we know the left tail of this is going to be over here on this side. And because it's on the left side, we know that this test of the tail is going to be a negative value. However, we have to continue to see our facts to see what kind of, uh, what kind of tail it is, what kind of test it is. Is it a Z test or a T test? So let's go down through all our information and gather up all the facts before we can determine that. So already we know that the mean of this distribution is going to be 1,200. And we also know the random sample is of 7, right? So random sample tells us what our n is. And our n is going to be 7. And we also know that the 7 samples have a mean cost of 1,125, and this makes x bar just that value, $1,125. And we also know that this sample has a standard deviation of $55. Now, when a sample produces a standard deviation, this is called the sample standard deviation, which is a s, not a sigma, right? And the difference between s and sigma is one is population-based, while one is based on a certain number of samples. Whereas our seven samples produce the standard deviation of $1,125. Uh, no, I'm sorry, $55, not $1,125. The standard deviation of the seven cars are $55. So 
Besides this, we also know alpha is 0 0.10. So now, based on this information, and being that this is normally distributed, we could do this, um, we could do this hypothesis test. So now, because our standard deviation for the population is unknown, we're using a t-score test. So now we have, to, we have to make our critical region based on a t-score sample. So here, what's important to know to get the degrees, of, to, to get the t-score critical value is we need to know what our degrees of freedom are. And to calculate the degrees of freedom, we have to take our n and subtract 1. So our n in this case is 7. So we have 7 take away 1, and this becomes 6. Now, the degrees of freedom are really, really important in finding your critical value. So to calculate your critical value, you have to get your degrees of freedom, and you also have to find out your area in the quantity of tails. Since this is a single tail test, we have to look at our t-score chart. Right at the top, there are two rows. One says area in two tails. One says area in one tail. So we're taking our alpha. We're putting the area in one tail. This should be all the way to the right side of the column, all the way to the farther side. And you're going to take your degrees of freedom, which is 6, which is on the left side. There's a column on the left side that has degrees of freedom. You're going to match the 6 with the area in one tail for 0 0.10. And when you mix and match them, the critical T value that you're going to get is going to be 1.440. Now, because this is a left tail test, and this lands on the left side of the t values, right? This is be the zero value. This is going to be negative 1.440, all right? So the tail of our test is going to start at negative 1.440. So our t critical will be negative 1.440. And if anything falls below this critical region with an area of 0 0.10 of probability, this is going to reject the null hypothesis. If it falls above this marker, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right? So our conditions again, if t is less than negative 1.440, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If t is greater or equal to negative 1.440, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, all right? So what do we have to do next? What we have next to do is to calculate the actual test statistic. Lucky for us, when we're doing t uh, hypothesis tests based on t values, we don't actually have to calculate the p-value because you need a calculator to do so. So what's really important in these cases is your critical region value of your t-score. So we're going to calculate our t-score and see if our t-test statistic falls outside or inside the acceptance and rejection region, right? So let's calculate our t-test value then. t-test that. The formula for this will be the x-bar minus the mean x-bar divided by Standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So in our case here, we're going to have, I'm just going to call this t-test. The t-test is going to be, and this is with respect to the t-test value. All right. So here we have the t-test. Our x-bar is $1,125. So we have 1125 minus 1200 divided by 55 over the square root of 7. Now, we have to be very careful when calculating this stuff again. So let's just calculate the numerator first. And what we're going to get up top is negative 75. And in the bottom, we have 55 divided by the square root of n. If you're looking for a good way to compute this on your calculator when you're punching it in, here's the algorithm for it. It's going to be negative 75, division symbol, parenthesis open, 55, division symbol, square root of 7, close parenthesis. You press enter. You want your number to be at least four decimal places so we can round the third place up. So here we're going to get negative. We have 3.6078. We're going to stop there. We're going to round this number up. And our t-test value 
becomes negative 3.608. So here's our test statistic. And now if we think about where this test statistic lands, it lands way further down below than negative 1.440, right? So our t-test statistic lands over here, negative 3.608. And because it falls all the way over here, we're going to reject the null hypothesis, all right? So if we had to sum this up into a good sentence, we'll say, because they're asking, is there enough evidence to support the agent's claim at alpha, a significance level of 10%? And we will say, there is not sufficient evidence. Wait, this is the claim? There is, a, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim, because we're rejecting the null hypothesis, which is saying it's greater. We're actually supporting that it's less because we're rejecting the null hypothesis and accepting the alternative. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the, the agents claim that the, two, the mean cost of insuring a two-year-old sedan is less than $1,200. Thank you.